speaking after Temple Grandin, I thought, you know, that's good news and that's bad news. Uh, it's good news because nobody can explain uh, you know, what autism is and how important it is to address this better than her. Bad news because, I mean, that is one of the most amazing speakers you'll ever come across. You really have to focus very hard because there is just so much information that she puts into so little time. Uh, what I would like to start with though is to, and this is how I got started really in this whole, look, you know, looking at autism. This is a book called Wasted Talent and that's really what this is about. It's by Krishna Narayanan who with a great deal of difficulty learnt how to write when he was about 21, in his early 20s. He was non-verbal the way Temple describes. And this book was published when he was 24. So you might say that this was pretty much the first thing that he wrote, right? And on page one, or on the first page of chapter one, he starts by telling you, when I was four, there was an elevator operator in the school. At that age, I was terribly tense. To relieve the tension, I stretched out my right hand and watched my fingers. This procedure, however weird it may appear to onlookers, soothed my tension. But to the elevator operator, I looked insane. He ridiculed me with nasty jokes. My total lack of communication worsened the situation. I could not even utter words then. Every day he made fun of me. Ridicule hurts. I was young and innocent. The ridicule hurt all the more because I could neither stop his behavior nor offer a retort. I was forlorn and hurt. Few things in life hurt more than ridicule at that tender age. I could not even tell my mom I was mute. Alone, all alone. I bore the terror every day. Ridicule is a veritable hell. But loneliness makes the suffering more poignant. Ever since that heart-rending episode, my interest in strangers has been dashed. What is the problem? Why can't the child communicate? There is a very good book called Brain Behavior Connections in Autism. And I will apologize to the nice ladies in trying to condense very deep thought into one slide. The problem is not the basic sensory functions. You can hear, you can see, you can remember. But as Temple was talking about, the problem is what are the interconnections between different parts of the brain? Some of them are quite strong as in her case, but some of them are weak or missing. So the problem comes in higher brain functions where different parts of the brain have to work together. So a simple question like what is the object in your hand is a tough one because you know you have to feel, you have to see, recognize and so on. Writing, speaking, require different muscles to work together, that's tough. And really, you know, bottom line has some important things in it. Information filtering, higher level brain function. What is important information, what is not? If you cannot filter out noise, then imagine what it is like. Uh, you know, if you can't filter out all the sounds that are around us here, it would be as if we were conducting this conference in a discotheque for a person with autism who is sensitive to sound. Uh, concept formation, if you have difficulty in concept formation like Temple was talking about categories, education is really, really tough because that's what education is pretty much all about, right? Okay, um, so let me take you to the next slide. In, in, in devising software that would work to get a person with autism to communicate, what are the things that we looked for? As Temple said, think in pictures. So tried working with pictures. Uh, reduce the content to essential information. Provide information in small, simple chunks. Uh, the good thing about putting this on a computer is the child can take this. This is this simple, you know, uh, uh, solid state 4G uh, netbook. 
which you can mount on a laptop, you can carry to class. If you are nonverbal, it can speak for you. Uh, the last line, the medium is the message, is a famous quote from uh, Marshall McLuhan from the 60s. The software that I am using to make this presentation is software that would allow a nonverbal autistic person to make this presentation. I have set it right now to only speak out the title, but it could equally be saying the whole text or something quite different. You know, it took me almost 40 years to understand what that line meant that Marshall said. But, um, okay, so let me show you the software a little bit. Uh, I have so far operated only one button, and when we start out with the child, that would be the only button that the child sees, right? Uh, the, this button is basically, uh, you know, the software is in a large number of modules. The button on my left and on your, your right is the button that allows me uh, to do something within a module. Within a module, very often I'll be saying yes to a choice. That's what this one is for. The other one allows me to change the module. So this is how we would start a child with autism. Uh, you know, you're sitting in front of the computer. You don't really have to do very much. All you're seeing is actually one switch. And what you're looking at is flowers. And that might occupy you for some time. But after a while, any child is curious. And so you'd hit that one switch in front of you. So you do that. And when you do that, nice. the category of pictures you are looking at changes. You are looking at flowers. Now you're looking at flags. And that change of category was announced. So we've as many folders as we've got, you know, that many folders one by one, the software picks up and cycles through the pictures in them. Very simple software. But already, this might help you get an idea of the category of flag or the category of flower. As Temple said, she runs through all the churches in her mind. We're providing you software to do exactly that. Okay. Now, you can carry on just pushing that button and you'll go through all the folders and that might keep you for a while. But now let's look at the next module. We were looking at flags. This module helps you to learn how to recognize pictures. Can you send the child to the market and hope that the child will bring back tomatoes as you want it? So there's one large flag of Iraq and there are four small pictures of flags, and if you say yes at the correct time, which I will attempt to do now, correct. it tells you, pauses for a bit, and presents you with another problem. So the child now, with just that same set of folders, has a lot more to do by, you can start learning recognition. And if you're tired of flags, you go back to the other module, Start looking at some other folder of pictures and come back here and you'll be recognizing those. But let me take you very quickly now to the next module that might help you understand categories better. This one ha is what we call the odd man out module. We've got three pictures of one category and one picture from some other category. And you have to be smart about detecting the man from the woman. Right. Now, the, you can use different things for the categories. You might have family members as one category and other people in the neighborhood in the other category. Can the child distinguish the family member from other people in the neighborhood? These are important things to learn. And we're hoping that this might be a useful way to learn that. OK. Uh, there may be children, as Temple was describing, that she's so concerned about. Bright kids, perhaps, people who have difficulty communicating, people who have, you know, whom you feel maybe the computer can help them learn better. Uh, the platform that we have designed makes it really, really easy to add new modules to it. Each of them is like about 25, 30, 40 lines of Ruby code, which, you know, anyone who knows a little programming can do over a weekend. Uh, Designing technology is all very good, but you also have to get the technology into the hands of the people who need it. And right now we have a problem that the Indian government won't even recognize autism as a disability under the Persons with Disabilities Act. 
A campaign has been launched by the Autism Society of India, and I would be delighted if you were to help us with that. We've started an NGO called the BAPSI, Bidirectional Access Promotion Society, which seeks to help those who have the least amount of access to information. So persons with mental challenges, in our opinion, form, are really have very, very poor access to information, and we're working towards helping them. But there are a lot of other such matters that we're taking up relating to policy and so on, where the idea is that we should try and fix the process instead of having to go and fix, you know, the bad output of, you know, and every single product that this process produces, rather than trying to fight one child, one problem at a time, one ramp, you know, one uh, accessible cyber cafe at a time. Can we not fix the process that sets these things up so that we do it once and for all? Uh, I hope that has given you some idea of how we are trying to approach the communication problem. You know, I mean, there are, what, for anything, for the school system to work, for the hospitals to work, for anything else to work, communication has to work. So the job of the plumber, in some sense, is the most important job of all. Thank you very much for